Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'm just going to quickly go over a sensitive topic, one that perhaps we don't want to talk about, honestly, but I think we should. It is your feet. Now, let's start from the outset by saying that we're hikers. So the most important thing about hiking is how we do the walking. So it's legs, it's feet, and lastly, back. I've talked about fitness before now. I've talked about perhaps having a gym membership or concentrating on your fitness regimen. That's a ball that's firmly in your court. For me today, we're just going to talk about my experiences and my understanding of how I managed to overcome a lot of uh, problems with my feet that held me back from hiking and uh, what you can do to perhaps find out what those problems might be for you and how to treat them nice and effectively. So we're going to go with top five or five major points, that's the name of the video, top five foot care tips, but we're just going to whiz through them, we're not going to be fancy about it, let's just get straight into it. So number five, the first thing that you need to check out is what condition are your feet in? So let's be honest, athlete's foot. With athlete's foot, a lot of people don't seem to realise they have it, and because of the way society is, having smelly feet seems to be the norm. And it's not. Sorry, your boots tend to smell, but your feet don't have to, nor should they. So straight away, you need to identify, without getting gruesome and gawsome, and I'm not going to hold the foot up as a demonstration because I don't have athlete's foot, you need to figure out if you actually have it. The symptoms can be itchy, skin, the skin can go very spongy, uh, it can be dry and cracked, it can spend a lot of time moist, perhaps if you're wearing boots all day. And then when you take the boots off and let the feet dry, they tend to go really hard and painful. You walk on them and you start splitting the skin and then they bleed. Right, let's just move on quickly from that. You know what they are, these symptoms. Straight away, tip number five is to get that sorted. And I have been on the trail and we did Hadrian's Wall Part 1, where the uh, one of our team had athlete's foot and failed to do anything about it. And literally... Brace yourself, the skin was falling off his feet. That's how bad it was. So this can be easily remedied with something simple like my cotter cream, which is one I use a lot because it's cheaper than athlete's foot cream uh, from the high street. My cotter cream can be found in the pharmacist. Sometimes it's even a pound or two pound for a tube. Slap that on your feet, leave it overnight, maybe put socks over the top to let that cream sink in. And I guarantee within two or three days, you won't have athlete's foot. Reapply as necessary. Usually I reapply it <clears throat> once I start to feel that hot sort of burning itch in my feet. So that is tip number five. We're going straight into number four. Not mucking about, not being fancy. Once you've dealt with the athlete's foot, the next thing you need to do is invest. And I just so happen to have done my laundry today. Let me give you a demo. Inside out as a man is long to do. These are synthetic socks. They're not cotton. They are made entirely from synthetic fibers. These are my hiking socks. This particular brand is Close Mate. It's from Amazon. You can buy a pack of them. They are more expensive than your everyday socks. Get synthetic fiber socks. They, they wick moisture away from your feet. They keep your feet cool inside your boot. And they stop that buildup of nasty bacteria uh, really sort of turning your feet into sponges of moisture. So definitely synthetic socks. Treat the athlete's foot, get synthetic socks. And keep these just for hiking. Put them to one side. Don't use them for everyday wear. Just use them for hiking because they do tend to be quite expensive. Okay, that's that. So you've got your athlete's foot sorted out. You have got your synthetic socks. Third, when you're not hiking and when you're not at work, when you're in your house, I highly recommend, and this was a game changer for me, I highly recommend you walk around barefoot as often as possible. Fresh air and fungal bacteria do not mix. Fresh air wins every time. If your feet are dry, if they're getting plenty of fresh air, that's fine. The fungus isn't going to have the environment it needs to grow and you're going to be able to sort of gauge how well your feet are doing. It gives the skin a chance to dry out and harden. And then when you do come to hike and you're going to spend all day in those boots, you're good to go because you've looked after your feet. 
And as soon as you get to where you're going, once you finish hiking, perhaps you're doing a multi-day trail, you can then take your shoes off, get cleaned up, fresh pair of socks on, and then you're good to go. I'd walk around generally in camp with uh, flip-flops on if the weather's nice, and I'll walk around barefoot. Uh, as often as possible if I'm in a hotel same again I won't just put socks and shoes back on I'll let the feet breathe and let them dry out so that's tip number three and I highly recommend you nail that one straight away build a routine into your life of walking around barefoot okay tip number two this might seem obvious but it's got to be high up there cleanliness every time if you can and you can develop a routine you should clean your feet at least every day Maybe you're one of those types of people who maybe doesn't shower every day. I'm not. I don't shower every day. Uh, my skin will not appreciate that fact. But some people do. If you don't, at least perhaps uh, spend a few minutes, just put your feet in the shower, get them clean, get them soaked up, get them dried. And uh, I'm not personally one for adding creams, potions and lotions to my feet. I just like to have them clean and dry. So tip number two, nice and easy. Keep the feet clean after a hike, before a hike, and during the week. And that leads me to tippity top tip number one, nice and simple, I bang on any ballet all the time. Buy a decent pair of boots, people. Your 30 pound caramels, they're not gonna cut it. If you're serious about hiking, you're serious about hiking gear, the first thing on your shopping list is decent boots. Do your research, they don't have to be the Solomons if you don't want them to be though I do recommend them. I don't work for Solomon, I just love them. But a lot of people swear by other brands such as Brashers uh, and there's some other Yorkshire based companies that I know. Full leather, synthetic, it's up to you, but do your research. The rules are you should not be getting blisters and rub spots on a hike. There's no excuse for it. You can argue with me till those moo cows come home. What this living proof I do not get blisters anymore. I do not get rub spots because I've spent some money on some good boots. So there we go. Five easy tips for you to put into practice. If you want to add to them or include some of your own uh, regimens, maybe putting lotions on to make them smell better. I don't have odours feet. It doesn't. It isn't a problem anymore. I used to. That odour is coming from the, the bacteria, and we won't really want to discuss that or go into any detail there. It's not nice. So get rid of the bacteria, and you're good to go. So remember, synthetic socks, barefoot walking, decent boots, cleanliness, and treat any athlete's foot conditions you might have. It's that simple. There's no magic formula. It's just basic. So there you go, guys. I'm not going to bang on about that. I'm going to go and have my tea and I don't really want to think about this subject. So there we go. Guys, do it, do the work and I hope it makes a big difference to your hike. And I will see you next time back on the trail.